I'm here at one of my favorite tiny cabins. Now, I've never posted any videos from here before, but I think some of you are going to recognize this place anyway. This is a beautiful piece of property. It's completely secluded, sits right in the middle of the woods. This place was logged about 70 years ago. So most of the trees here now are second growth cedar. The place is completely surrounded by these beautiful cedar trees. Let me take you back to when I got started. I purchased the property in March of 2020, and this is the first day I'd been out here since I purchased the property. I spent my day clearing blackberry bushes and making piles of what could be burned and what would have to be hauled to the dump. As I was clearing the property, I was starting to get my vision on where the cabin would go. I wasn't sure how much snowfall they get up here, so I wasn't sure what type of roof to put on the cabin. And since we were only a week from spring, I probably wouldn't know for sure till next year. I felt like I got a lot done that first day. And as I stared into this fire, this peaceful feeling came over me. I felt like I was truly happy. The man upstairs is always looking out for me, and sometimes I don't feel like I deserve it. But as I sat there staring into the flames, it started to snow. It was at that point I knew this would be the steepest roof I ever put on one of my tiny cabins. The following week, I staked out where the cabin would go. The hole you see in the middle is eventually where the toilet would be. I dug up the old sewer line that led to the septic tank. I dug a series of pilot holes that led to the tank. The old sewer line was in pretty bad shape. It had started to collapse, so I had to bury a new sewer line. At the same time, I also added a sewer clean out. My daughter was here to help me dig. She wouldn't be happy to see herself in my video, but it makes me happy. The following week, I finished the sewer line. I also had to dig a ditch for the power and water line. I had to add a 100 watt circuit breaker to the RV pedestal, and I also had to hook up the new water line. The next week I was back again to set the concrete forms. The two stakes you see mark the underground water and sewer lines. I built a special jig that would be buried in the concrete. I couldn't use any screws because I needed to be able to knock it out once the concrete had finished. This jig would be buried one inch below the level of concrete. You can see here is where the water comes in to the cabin and also where the sewer exits the cabin. I'll fill the jig with sand, and this will mark where the toilet is going to go, and also where the drain will go for the bathtub. I also had to measure for where the electricity would enter the cabin. I put down a vapor barrier and then the rebar. Tomorrow, I would be pouring the concrete.
The following day, I poured the concrete. I spent most of the day just smoothing the concrete using a trowel. In the background, you can see the trowel. I spent most of the day pushing it back and forth across the concrete until I had it really smooth. Now I waited almost a month to return to the job site and break the forms. The concrete had dried perfectly. I was very impressed with the way it looked. I removed the forms and filled in the area around the slab with dirt. The following day, Home Depot delivered my first load of lumber. Framing is probably one of my favorite things to do. It goes up quickly and it finally starts to look like a house. By the time I finished this day, I had that peaceful feeling again. I felt like I had really accomplished something. I just wanted to sit there and look at my work. The following week, it was time to frame up the roof. I enjoy framing, but I don't enjoy being up on a ladder. Plus, everything is a little bit wobbly at this time. With the framing done, next week I'd be putting the roof on. I really wanted to get that roof done. It doesn't look that high, but it's 18 feet up to the peak. Made me kind of feel uneasy. I decided to take a break and go for a walk. At 18 feet tall, I wanted to see if I could see the cabin from the road. Getting the roof on was one of those big accomplishment days. I almost hurt my shoulder patting myself on the back. With the roof on, everything is dry now. Weather is no longer a factor. I really felt proud. The following week, I started on the siding. Once the siding was up, I had security, and I no longer had to take my tools home with me every day. The following week, it was time to paint. I manufacture paint for a living, and so this is one heck of a good paint. I don't really have a choice on the color, though. I just mix everything together that's around the shop. The next week, the weather forecast was calling for snow, so I couldn't wait to get up there. And of course, I'd only be working inside now.
Remember I had the plumbing and the electrical buried just under the surface of the concrete, and now is the time to knock it out. You can see here, this is where the toilet will go. This is the plumbing vent pipe. And over here we have the water main. Here's the final pipes all installed. And now we all we have to do is fill in the area with concrete. Next, the bathroom wall goes up and the rest of the fresh water plumbing goes in. The red lines are hot, the blue lines are cold. Now that the plumbing is finished, I can start on the electrical. Wiring is one of my favorite things. I find it really relaxing. Up on the ceiling, you can see where all the lights are going to go. Once the wiring is finished, we go straight to insulation. This is another favorite time of mine because now when we're working inside, it's going to be warm. The next job is sheetrock. Sheetrock I don't enjoy. It's heavy work. I don't mind once the sheetrock is all hung, just having to mud and tape all the seams. But it sure looks nice once you're finished. I was looking for a special door for the bathroom. I wanted the bathroom door to have a window in it, and then I would frost the glass. I found a used one on Craigslist, and I had to refinish it, but I thought it came out looking really nice. When you're dealing with a tiny space, you want to have light shining through anywhere you can. I thought the bathroom door fit perfectly. Everything was coming together. I got the floor put up in the loft, and I just had the final touches downstairs. The kitchen came from IKEA. The bathroom came from another remodeling job, and I found an awesome ladder from a bookstore that went out of business in Seattle. Thank you, Amazon. I hung a TV above the front door and I used an antenna. It only got one channel, but it was the channel the Seahawks were on, so I was happy. The construction of this modest cabin was a year long undertaking that brought me a profound sense of tranquility throughout the process. The finishing touches were applied with great care, creating a personal sanctuary situated within the heart of the forest. Well, I'm heading out. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please hit that like and subscribe button.